We're at lesson 3.6b. This is still the getting ready part. This is estimation strategies, reasonable estimates. Estimation is helpful when we don't need an exact answer or when we want to check that our answer is reasonable. In a multi-step problem, it might make sense to overestimate in some steps and underestimate in other steps. A store is having a sale on their t-shirts. Each t-shirt is 15% off the regular price of $21. Tala thinks it's about $18. We can use the equation 21 minus 15 hundredths times 21. This represents the 15% off. We write the percentage as a decimal, 0 0.15. We multiply it by the original price, 21. That's going to tell us what 15% off is. We can use that to find the sale price, then rethink it with compatible numbers. If we round 15% up to 20%, we underestimate. We can round the 21 to 20 for the original price and do 20 minus the percentage off. We can write it as 0 0.2 times the $20 we rounded it to. So that means we have 20 minus 4, which is equal to $16. Now this is an underestimate because... When we wrote it as a decimal, this 0 0.2 is greater than 0 0.15, the 15%. So we're subtracting a greater amount, 20%, than 15%. So it's an underestimate. If we round the 15% down to 10%, we overestimate. We rounded the 21 to 20 and... We write 10% as a 0 0.1. We can also write it as a 0 0.10, couldn't we, for 10%. We need to multiply that by the 20 we rounded the 21 off to. And that's going to give us a 20 minus 2, which is $18. Now, this is an overestimate because that 0 0.1 for the 10% is less than 0 0.15 for the 15%. So we're subtracting a lesser amount from the original price. And Tala's $18 estimate is reasonable. It's what we got when we rounded it down to 10%. Jim earns a salary of $80,000 per year. He pays an income tax rate of 26%. He budgeted his weekly income after taxes to be $1,138. Use estimation to confirm that his budget is reasonable. So the first thing we're going to do is use a compatible percent to estimate Jim's annual income tax. 26% is close to 30%. So mentally multiplying by 0 0.30 for the 30% to estimate the tax. We've got $80,000 times 30%. That would be 80,000 times 0 0.30. That's equal to 24,000. 24,000 is an overestimate of his annual tax because 30% taken from his pay is greater than 26%. The second thing we do is estimate how much of his $80,000 annual income is remaining after taxes. Since 24,000 is an overestimate, we round down to the leading digit two for 20,000 and subtract using mental math. Now we have mental math of $80,000 salary minus 20,000 in taxes would leave 60,000 remaining. It tells us Jim keeps about 60,000 per year. So these were estimates, so it's not exact. It's about 60,000 per year. Now we estimate his weekly income after taxes. There's 52 weeks in a year, so we can use a compatible number, 50, instead of the 52, as the divisor and 60,000 as the dividend. We do 60,000, that's what's remaining after taxes, divided by 50, because we round the 52 weeks to 50. And we think, well, 60,000 divided by 50, and we can actually cross off this zero and this zero. We can even look at it as 60 divided by 5. That would be 12. And then we have two zeros left over. 
That's 1,200. Do you see how I did that? I got rid of these two zeros on top of each other because they canceled each other out. And then I looked at this as 60 divided by 5, like this, which is 12. But I still have two zeros, so that's what gave me the 1,200. His weekly after-tax income is approximately $1,200, 1200 Jim's budget of $1,138 is reasonable because it's close to $1,200, our overestimate. Because we got $1,200, it's an overestimate of what he actually is making each week. Sarah is planning her wedding reception. The banquet hall charges $38 per person for dinner. She budgeted $180 for flower centerpieces on the tables, $268 for decorations, $625 for a DJ, $730 for a photographer, and $1,050 to rent the banquet hall. There will be a total of 78 people at her wedding reception. Estimate the cost of Sarah's wedding reception. Well, we know it said $38 per person for the dinner, and there's going to be 78 people. So the first thing we can do is the $38 times the 78 people for the dinners. And we can use 40 and 80 as compatible numbers. We have 4 times 8 is 32 with two zeros. That would be 3,200. Now we can add the flowers, decorations, DJ, photographer, and hall rental using compatible numbers grouped together. We have 180 for the flowers, 268 for the decorations, 625 for the DJ, 730 for the photographer, and 1050 for the hall rental. We can round the $1,050 to $1,000. We can group together the $268 plus the $730 to be about 1000 we have 200 and 700. These make 900. And then when we add the $68 to the $30, that's about 100. So that's about $1,000. Here we have 180 plus 625. These are compatible. If we add the 100 and the 600 together, we have 700. And if we add the 80 and the 25, we have about another 100. So that's about 800. We can add them all together and get $6,000. So Sarah's wedding reception will cost about $6,000. We know the commutative property of addition states that we can add in any order and get the same sum. We can group compatible numbers together to do mental math with the associative property of addition. This one is telling us to use compatible numbers to estimate the sum. We have 19 plus 56 plus 87 plus 78 plus 12 plus 43. We can change their order with the commutative property. This is almost 80, and this is almost 20. So if we group the 19 with the 78, we have 100, about 100. We can group this 56 with this 43 to have about another 100. And we can group this 87 with this 12 to have about another 100. We've got 300. We added up all of these add-ins, and it's about 300. It's approximately 300. This is how we can use a reasonable underestimate. If we have 15 and 3 tenths divided by 5, by removing the 3 tenths, we rounded down to 15 to create an underestimate. It's equal to 3. We can use a reasonable overestimate. If we have 24 and 6 tenths multiplied by 4, we can just round this up to 25. So that's going to make it an overestimate because we rounded up. 25 times 4 is 100. We could do that with mental math. So by rounding up to 25, we created an overestimate. An underestimate is lower than the actual amount, and an overestimate is more than the actual amount. Okay, we finished the getting ready section. 
We're going to move on to the regular part of 3.6. I've labeled it 3.6C, and it's assessing reasonableness of answers. Have a wonderful day, and join me for the next part of the lesson. Bye.